Hey guys, Captain Fructose here, and welcome to another video. Today's video obviously is in Stormworks, and I'm going to be showing you how to use the PID controllers. So I know a lot of people have issues uh, figuring these things out, or you just don't know how they work in general, and so I'm going to go through and show you how they work and how to use them. So, let's go ahead and get started here. We'll go into the workbench. And, of course, the first thing we got to do is build us a little test bench to work on. Or work, I guess, with this on. So, we'll just, we'll just do that. Something really simple like that. And then, we're going to need something to use the PID controller with. So, we're going to build a nice little stand here. And we'll get a compact velocity pivot. And let's go ahead and place that there. And then we will place, let's actually, no, 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 nope, I know what I'm doing. This is fine. Don't worry about it. It's fine. Okay, we'll place the second one there. And then we have our tilt sensor. So we'll go ahead and stick our tilt sensor on there, like so. So that's all we've got so far. And now, obviously, we're going to need power for this. So let's add a battery. So we have our... I'll just throw a medium battery on there. It doesn't really matter what size of battery you use. I just use a medium battery because it's not too big and it lasts long enough for what I need. So, and then we'll need a uh, throttle. I almost completely forgot the name of it. So let's grab the throttle. We'll throw it right here since we don't need the tilt sensor anymore since we already placed it. So let's go ahead. Actually, that is upside down. Okay, so we'll place our throttle there. Okay, now we need our PID controller. So we'll grab this, and this works the same way as the PID controller in the uh, microprocessor or microcontroller editor works. It's exact same uh, thing. So we'll go ahead and place that there. We're gonna place a constant number here, and we're gonna place an on signal, okay? Now, let me just double check, make sure I have everything we need. That should be everything we need. So now we're gonna go into our logic and first things first, before I forget it, we need to hook up our electrical to everything so that everything works. And now we'll go to our data. So here is our PID controller. So we have our set point. So this is gonna be the point that you want it to hold at. So for this, we want it to just stay level so we're going to use the constant number and put it into our set point. And our constant number is going to be zero because we're using the tilt sensor. We don't want it to tilt at all. So we want it to stay at zero. So our set point is going to be zero. So we'll set it right there. This is to enable the PID controller. And so for what we're doing, I'm just going to set it to this constant on signal so that it will constantly be working. There may be situations you don't want to use that or have it on constantly but for this tutorial we will have it on constantly now this is our process variable this is where we're going to take the input from the tilt sensor and run it into the PID controller and then we're going to take our output and run it to our second velocity pivot all right so that's all for setting up the logic for the PID controller so now we're going to take our throttle and run it to the rotational speed on our first compact velocity pivot so that we can change it and uh, give it a reason to try and level itself. Now, before we go and try and test this, we need to open up our PID controller. And this is where a lot of people get confused because it's like, well, I don't know what the proportional gain does, integral gain, or derivative gain does. So our derivative gain, which is the bottom one here, is how fast it's going to try to move to get to the set point. So this is basically just our speed that it's gonna get there. This is going to slow it down before it gets there so it doesn't overshoot and have to come back because if you overshoot too far, it'll just keep going up and down and it won't ever level out or stay smooth. It'll just sit there and vibrate or just wag up and down. Uh, so we, we want this to be higher 
than this, at least for this tutorial. The integral gain, we'll just leave it alone. We'll just leave it as one. You don't really need to worry about that too much. Uh, this basically increases the sensitivity of the entire thing, so it makes everything happen faster. So we won't mess with the integral gain. Generally, you only need to mess with the proportional and derivative gain. So remember, proportional is it slowing down so it doesn't overshoot. The derivative gain makes it go faster. So now that we've got our proportional gain turned up a little bit so it doesn't overshoot too far, and I believe we have our electrical hooked up, which it looks like we do, and we have our data all hooked up, and if you need to pause the video to see what I've done so you can follow along, go ahead and pause the video at any point. So now that we have that done, we can actually go ahead and spawn this in, but I, uh, I'm going to move this a little bit closer to where I am so that you know we don't have to run halfway across the hangar just to get to our little test bench. So we'll move it right there, and then we'll just plop it on the floor. All right, so let's spawn that. So there's our little test bench. And as you can see, it is wagging a little bit, but not too bad so far. So let's adjust our throttle lever and get it rotating here. So it looks like it is somewhat staying level, but it is wagging. So it is bouncing up and down. So we need to adjust our PID controller a little bit in order to stop it from doing that. So let's go back into our workbench and click on our PID controller and let's change our proportional gain. Let's actually double it. Let's set it to four this time. So we'll turn that up and hopefully that will stop it from overshooting as much. So let's spawn this in and we'll run over here. So far it's nice and smooth, but we'll see. So let's go ahead and do that and then we'll just stop it. All right, so it's wagging a little bit, but as you can see, it's not staying wagging, like it's stopped. It took it a little bit, but it eventually did stop and even out. So like for some things that might work, but for most things, we're gonna want this to stay even as possible so it doesn't wag as much. So that means that we need to go back in and need to turn this up. I'm actually just going to double it again to 8. And we'll leave derivative gain the same and the integral gain the same because it is still moving fast enough. So we don't need to change our derivative unless it's not going fast enough. But as it is right now, it's going fast enough. It's just overshooting. So we're going to turn our proportional gain up to keep it from overshooting as far. So let's turn that up a little bit like so. And then we'll start it. All right, and let's stop it. So as you can see, it, it did a little bit. It overshot very slightly, but it came back to center very quickly. So let's go again and then stop right there. See? So that's looking pretty good, uh, although we do want it to stay level, a little bit more level. So this is where we're actually going to turn up our derivative gain to have it move a little bit faster so that it's not lagging behind. As you can see, it was like at a tilt. And so we're going to speed that up just a little bit there. So let's go ahead and spawn that in. And hopefully that should keep it from being too far behind. And then we'll go ahead and stop this. There we go. So that's looking pretty good. And as you can see, it looks like it is staying level with that. And then we go ahead and stop it here. And it's still bouncing a little bit. So... You know, this is this is the process. If you don't know calculus or haven't done calculus, uh, unfortunately, you won't be able to, you know, do all the math to figure out what you need for your proportional and derivative and integral gains. So for the rest of us, we have to kind of do this system of trial and error and adjusting it. So we're just, we just adjust it, test it, and adjust it again. And keep doing that until we get it tuned in to where we want it. Okay, so that looks level now. All right, and then we'll slow it down. So that's looking pretty good. So that's basically all there is. This is just a basic PID tutorial. So that's how you use the PID to control like a velocity pivot. It works the same way for the robotic pivots as well, um, and for the uh, control fins and stuff like that. So, um, as far as like a basic tutorial, that's all I've got for this one. If you guys want a more advanced tutorial um, on 
the PIDs, or if you want a tutorial on the microcontroller editor or Lua, leave it in the comments below. Let me know what you'd like help with or, you know, anything like that. Anything you'd like to learn about, I can do a tutorial for you. Uh, but that's it for this one, guys. So thank you so much for watching. If you enjoyed it, please leave a thumbs up. If it helped you out, please leave a thumbs up. And as always, guys, thank you so much for joining me on this wonderful adventure. And I will see you on the next one. Bye, guys. <laughs>